Welcome back to Volume 2 of our series on hardware. We'll continue where we left off. Here is an image of a check. Why a check? Well, you may find it interesting to learn that a check is the starting point for a whole chain of information related activities. To begin with, it's not just regular paper and ink. The check comes with special information on it written in a special magnetic ink. If you look at the bottom of your check before cashing it, you will see your account number and bank routing information printed there. That information is printed in a special magnetic ink so that once it arrives at a processing point, the activity becomes automated, saving the bank and ultimately you money. Today, some retail outlets have the ability to process that information automatically so that the check itself is not even needed further. They will often hand it back to you. Once again, we have an example of an input device and its related processing that has greatly streamlined the processing of information in business. This is a very good image showing the mechanical workings of a hard disk drive. Notice that our processing graphic indicates that it is both an input and an output device. When one is starting an application, the program must be loaded into memory from the disk drive, making it an input device. When saving a document that has been edited, that same device is an output device. In fact, in modern operating system, a program is rarely loaded in its entirety at any time. The operating system brings in lines of code as needed, so the input process is really ongoing as you are using your software. The hard disk drive is considered magnetic storage. Magnetic storage is the storage of data on a magnetized medium. Magnetic storage uses different patterns of magnetization to store data and is a form of non-volatile memory. Non-volatile means that the data is not lost when the power goes off. Information is accessed using one or more of the read-write heads that you see in this graphic. Magnetic storage media, primarily hard disks, are widely used to store computer data as well as audio and video signals. Here's another example of storage, a DVD or a CD. Like a hard disk, this is a form of secondary storage, meaning a semi-permanent, non-volatile storage location where one can keep important documents and other files until needed. While the hard disk is a magnetic medium, DVDs are a form of optical storage where data is stored using blemishes on the surface to reflect a laser to sensors in a manner that can be used to identify the zeros and ones of binary code. A USB flash drive, also known by other names, is a data storage device that includes flash memory with an integrated universal serial bus interface, or USB. Flash memory is an electronic, non-volatile computer storage medium that can be electrically erased and reprogrammed. Flash drives are typically removable and rewritable and physically much smaller than an optical disk. This looks like a smartphone. Did you ever think we'd be discussing a telephone during electron computer hardware? This little device, in fact, is a computer with its own processor and its own memory. It is also a form of input and output device. This one happens to be one of the iPhones from Apple with its own operating system. This is a Samsung that uses one of the Android operating systems from Google. And this one is a BlackBerry with its own proprietary mobile operating system. Modern mobile operating systems combine the features of a personal computer operating system with other features, including a touchscreen, cellular, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS mobile navigation, camera, video camera, speech recognition, voice recorder, music player, near field communication, and infrared blaster. My goodness, that mobile operating system seems to have a lot of features. Of course, we all recognize the LCD monitor. LCD stands for liquid crystal display. Notice that the slide indicates that this is an input and an output device, although most of the time we think of a monitor as an output device. And although most monitors we see today are still simply output devices, some are touch sensitive and can be used for input. The view on the monitor that we're seeing in this image is Windows 8 start screen. 
Windows 8 does support a touch-sensitive screen that would make it possible to use a web browser, for example, in the same way that one would use a tablet or a smartphone. This old monitor is called a CRT, or a cathode ray tube. It is the technology that was used for many, many years. The monitor is large, it's heavy and cumbersome, and didn't go away a minute too soon. This is a laser printer. The laser printer is an excellent printer that revolutionized the printing industry, or devastated it, depending on who you ask. Laser printing is an electrostatic digital printing process. It very rapidly produces high quality text and graphics by repeatedly passing a laser beam back and forth over an electron charged cylindrical drum to define a differentially charged image. The drum then selectively collects electrically charged powdered ink or toner and transfers the image to the loaded paper which is then heated in order to permanently fuse the text or imagery. The quality of this product is a professional quality, which is where the suggestion of devastation comes from. This is because the laser printer allowed organizations to create internally documents that previously would have been sent out to a print firm. Here we have a popular option for a personal printer, the inkjet printer, which offers a user a very good option for low cost, high quality color print. The quality of the output is excellent and is suitable for almost any application by an individual. It really does not work in a high volume facility like a university computer lab. The cost of the ink cartridges is prohibitive and that very high volume is just too much for this type of printer. Now this is my personal favorite for a printer as long as color is not a requirement. This is the dot matrix printer. The print head of this machine contains a collection of nine or more pins that fire out as the characters are formed, slamming a ribbon and then the paper. In early versions, one could see the dots that made up each letter. But as these machines evolved and added more and more pins to the print head, the output improved to such a level that the quality would satisfy any user. Another real benefit of this printer is the low cost of the ribbons that it uses. In addition to that, these things are almost indestructible. I used to tell folks that I could throw one of these things out a second floor window of my computer lab, pick it up off the ground, plug it in, and it would still work. Perhaps that was an exaggeration, but it is true that dot matrix printers provide excellent output at low cost and will last a long, long time. Each of these printers offers advantages and disadvantage, and which is best will depend entirely upon the application. Lasers can do anything well. The color versions are more costly and sometimes difficult to maintain. The ink jets also do anything well. The cost of the ink is a problem, and the durability does not compare to the other two. Dot matrix are great, but do not offer the speed of the laser or the quality of the ink jet. This could be called a special purpose printer. It's the plotter. This device is used by designers, architects, and others in the business of producing high quality graphic documents. Let's take a break here. Once again, go ahead and review your review questions and the material that we've covered so far and make sure you've caught all the answers. And take a few moments and when you're ready, come on back and we'll go to video number three in this series.